Hi, everybody. It's Debbie Leno here with the Aegis Women Movement. I'm so thrilled and excited tonight to share my friend with you, Fee Jamison. Is it Falland? It is. Falland, yeah. yes. I'm so happy for her to be here tonight. She greets us from New Zealand. So what time is it your time? It's eight o'clock here in, in uh, Eastern Standard Time. And what is it the following day now in New Zealand? It sure is. So it's the, the following day at 10 to midday. Wow. Yeah. It's so cool. I'm, you know, all of you by now know that I love to talk with women all over the world that have compelling, interesting stories and Fee definitely does. And, and I just, when I read her, her story, I'm like, this has to be shared. It's just so good. So good. So let's just open up by Fee, will you just tell us something about yourself and how you started and your education and and all those things in between. I'm so fascinated mm. to hear more about you. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate the invitation and to be able to be here connecting with you and obviously the beautiful ladies who are drawn to connect with you as I have been. And so, yeah, and it's a real privilege to be here. So thank you. Um, and goodness so starting out my, my life began in the UK where I was where I was brought up born and brought up and it was a really interesting um, childhood in that we all have interesting times and we all have our challenges of course and um, for me I, I kind of I grew up pretty fast in that I grew up in an alcoholic home which was pretty full-on um, and I you know I, I found my way through we had great support great support from friends um, and, you know, for me that I wouldn't replace that for anything um, because of the learnings that have happened for me and that continue to happen for me because of that experience, which, um, yeah, it was it. I suppose it helped me to realize I, I think one thing that's been really valuable for me in terms of what I do now um, is that it helps me to understand a sense of what people may have been through. Obviously, our, our experiences are unique and I can just. I remember at the time it really didn't feel that way at all <laughs> but now when I think back on it and I and I I like I say I would not have, it, have changed anything and so I was dead set from a youngster that I was going to be a dentist so I studied all the sciences I was actually really enjoyed art and I was good at languages and I was I was pretty creative but I decided no I'm going to really study the sciences so I kind of went through all of that and decided just before once I got my spaces at university that I didn't think actually I I really wanted to do that for a multiple multitude of reasons, not least because I like to talk with people. And when someone's sitting there with their mouth open, they can't talk to me. <laughs> and you know, and then of course, all the toxic products that are used in classically in dentistry anyway. And so fortunately I found my way with osteopathy. And so that's what I ended up going to study. And just before I studied that, I got my spot at, at um, uni. I went out to Australia for the year. So it was my first time, um, over, actually not my first time overseas, but the first time on a plane. I was like, wow, I was 19. And it was an opportunity for me to actually be able to say, actually my parents and all their stuff that they've got, I've had enough. I've kind of been playing mother role growing up and sort of trying to wear multiple hats and be everything to everyone. And I'd really had enough. And so I wanted to learn to, about standing on my own two feet, finding my own way, finding my own opinions about stuff stretching my wings, learning who I am. And it was amazing. I fell in love with the Antipodes, absolutely. Oh my gosh, I really didn't want to go back. I didn't want to go back and study, so pleased I did. And once I qualified, I came over to New Zealand to look for, I had a good job to come to and fell in love with, with this extraordinary place for a whole, whole, bunch, whole bunch of different reasons. And then let's see, so, um, that was kind of like where I'm from and kind of the journey to, to being here now. I've been here about, I think it's about 25 years. I've lived oh here my God. The pictures are breathtaking. <laughs> breathtaking. Yeah. I see you on the beach. I'm like, oh my God. I mean, that looks like heaven on earth. It looks it just really so beautiful. Is. It really is. And, you know, we happen to, where we've chosen to be in this beautiful little slice of paradise, we've, we're about 15 minutes from the beach that's been voted the most beautiful beach in New Zealand. Um, another beach not far away, Puckley Beach, was this kind of like, I don't know if you've seen the movie, The Piano, but it's very like The Piano. 
um, in turn, well, it was filmed here, so it's very much like that. And then you've got the Lord of the Rings, which probably many people know, with every kind of landscape you can imagine. So we had that right here, literally, you know, pretty much on our doorstep. And, you know, being in a privileged position to be in New Zealand right now, where COVID, we know it's going on, but there are only cases in isolation where somebody may have flown in and, and had COVID, that they are in isolation. Those are the only that's the only incidence of it. I heard that recently. I, I didn't realize that, but I've heard that recently. Like within the last couple of weeks, I think somebody had mentioned that to me. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's such a privilege to live in a place where we, I, gosh, I don't take it for granted for a second, but really it's like, it doesn't exist. Uh, however, you know, I speak with friends every day who are in parts of the world where, you know, the, there are big, big problems right now. And friends of theirs are dying, you know, this is the reality. And so I, yeah, I just feel very, privileged that we were called to come back here to our New Zealand base after five and a half years of being location independent and just traveling constantly that in December 2019 when we came back for summer like we usually do we just I just felt oh let's let's look for a place where we can put put our roots down a little bit more and have more of a base when we come back here and we stay put for the last year it's a, it's been an, kind of a um, a big project in that we took on our beautiful place we call Magic Mountain, where it's absolutely gorgeous. The air, oh. it's just tasting the air. When I've been mm. to the city and I come mm. back here, it's like, oh, mm. my, my lungs are singing. It's absolutely beautiful. And the, the sounds of the tui birds, it's looking, it's worth looking those up. There are these magical, very um, um, regal looking native New Zealand bird. It's I'm writing that down. I, tui. They make pretty much, they can mimic and imitate all sorts of sounds. They're amazing. And so they're just, where we are in our house, we're in the treetops looking out over this incre incredible landscape. So Lord of the Rings, <sighs> this is, we're kind of like in the center of, of it here. And so I, coming, coming from the UK, which is beautiful, and then coming here, which seems to have the best of in so many ways, with a tiny population, and I sound like a... <laughs> <laughs> the travel agent for New Zealand, don't I? But I'm, um, I yeah, I'm, I feel very blessed, and so right yeah, so, I, yeah. So I'd like to talk about the moment when you were told that um, you wouldn't survive to 23. So you were 20 when when that diagnosis got handed to you. Tell us about that. That was a really interesting one. Um, so. I was 21 and it was the end of my first year at college studying to be an osteopath. And I was, um, I learned that uh, it was a Saturday morning and I learned that my dad had been driving along, going with mum to go and do their usual shop that they did every month, big, you know, a big um, way of being able to save by buying everything together. And it was a bit of a journey, a bit of a trip. And as we were going, um, a very busy Saturday morning, he saw, or well, they saw, an older couple who had broken down by the side of the road, and they were still kind of on the road, and so he thought, oh gosh, I'm not going to leave them, so he pulled in, in just in front of them, and he ran back to help them in their car to push them off the road, and my mum kind of sat there doing a knitting, thinking, oh, you know, she wasn't happy with that, they wanted to get, you know, she wanted to get on, anyway, so dad ran back, pushed the car off the road, and apparently as he pushed the car on his off the road, he fell on his face. And as it happens, he we learned afterwards, he'd had a massive heart attack and died pretty much instantly. And so that was the first sign that there was a problem for him with his health. So- How traumatic for your mother, how traumatic. Uh, oh I my mean, goodness. That... It would have been, I, can't, I don't know, to put into words, I, I don't know, yeah. I, no words for it really. And all of us were so shocked. That's the thing. So not mum, but my two sisters and I were so shocked because dad seemed to, he looked so healthy. Mm. He looked fit. Um, he had a couple of gray hairs, but you know, he, the, 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 the other side to this. So looking on the outside, you know, we go running together and he'd kind of outrun me on the long bits. And, uh, you know, I'd be like, wow, he was, he was fitter than I was at 20 and I was 21, he was 50. And yet that was my first insight into how things can look okay from the outside, but the house can be burning down on the inside in terms of how our body's functioning. 
Um, you know, he grew up in a really harsh environment when he, you know, his mum had nothing. He had a younger brother and they ate bread and dripping. They didn't have any food. So he was already starting to set up his arteries for damage right you know, back then. And he led, led a very stressful life working, never, never stopped working. We very rarely saw him. We adored him, but we never saw him. And so it was such a huge shock. Within three days, both my two sisters and I had been health, you know, had our own health checks. And we discovered that my two sisters were fine and I'd inherited similar health challenges to dad. Um, and that's when I was given three years to live unless I took medication every day for the rest of my life. And so for me, I'm very stubborn. <laughs> and whilst medicine saves lives, I have no question about that in my mind. When it comes to chronic degenerative disease, it makes sense for us now that we know what we know um, to be looking at the whole picture, lifestyle, you know, things like how happy are we with what we do? How, what are our relationships, the quality of our relationships? What's our environment like? You know, we're just, we're just singing the praises at this beautiful place. Um, and that's very deliberate. Making these choices for me now um, in terms of reducing, I used to work hundred hour weeks. You know, I, I was following in my dad's footsteps and it took something like that massive shock to pull me right up and stop me. Um, and it was, it was, it was such a shocker. I couldn't, it, I found it very challenging to imagine anything. Yeah, for sure. Well, you bring up a great point that I talk about often is that how um, you cannot judge your health by the way that you look and, and how f quote unquote fit you are is not, is not the telltale story of what's going on on the inside. Yeah. yeah, you're so right. We can be fit and not healthy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, no, that was that was a big eye opener. And that's where I realized that um, to me, it made more sense. If, if my body had got herself into that pickle, I'm I was really keen to find a way to help my body get back on track. And so I'm so fortunate that um, one of my lecturers, several of my lecturers are really, really um, compassionate and helpful. And one of them became my mentor. So he was teaching us, he was a medical doctor, teaching us pharmacology, he was also a medical herbalist. And he started to teach me mm. about things like maybe not drinking quite so much alcohol <laughs> every weekend um, or smoking when I was drunk or um, binging on the things that I, you know, I was, I was a vegetarian. So I thought, oh, well, I'm healthy. And I would, you know, pretty much that meant eating whatever I could get my hands on and eating it, all of it. Yeah, as long as it wasn't me, <laughs> <You> know, right? <laughs> exactly. The big bars of chocolate, you know, I'd woof. It's be not down. me, that I'll eat down. it. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I had a big appetite and I still do have a big appetite for, for many things. Um, but fortunately, I've kind of managed over the years to adjust my taste buds. So I tend to kind of crave low glycemic um, green things. And that's just through persistence. And also, you know, I don't know if I would have made those changes in my life if I hadn't had that massive kick up the butt. It, and it took something that big to help me shift off that trajectory and wake up. Another integral part of your story. Well, huge. Yes. So, yeah. I'm Again, it's like growing up in the environment I did, I think it's really helped me to have more compassion, you know, whether or not I always demonstrate that because, you know, my humanness comes in, but I certainly have that more of a capacity I know than it would, I would have had if I hadn't had that environment growing up. And then likewise here, you know, yeah. just never taking things for granted. You know, dad was my, my hero. And, you, you know, it was, it was such a shock when he passed away. And I suppose I, I kind of put all that to one side once I was grappling with what am I going to do, you know, once I had that diagnosis? But I also believe, you know, like you said earlier, that's such an integral part for me because it has helps me to relate perhaps with people who I work with now, I had the privilege of working with, who maybe they are on medication or they are told that they need to take it. I'm often the last person that people will see because they've seen this person, this person, this person. And they're looking for a way not to ditch medication necessarily, but to find a way to harness what they do have yes. and to find their way through that's unique to them. Nobody will be the same as me. Nobody will be the same as you. And um, yeah, I might be, I am inspired by you and I need to find my way with that. And that's what I am in love with in the process of what I get to do is to help people to find the best way for them. 
So um, how did it, ch- I'm really curious that this big event that happened and how it changed the course of your studies. Mm. So the, the, I guess it took me from being completely, I need to get 100% in everything and just get everything right, you know, perfectionism, which can be a classic part of growing up in an alcoholic home. Um, but to, to actually be having that fascination that I was living, I thought, okay, I become my own experiment. So I was just sharing with a friend this morning that I wanted to, I tried all sorts of different ways of eating just to see how they would be for me now. And I've kind of found this balance at the moment, but it's always changing. And there used to be a time in my life where I was like, no, that's my label. I'm a vegetarian or I'm a vegan or I'm whatever. And now for me, it's a lot more about intuition and listening. What does my body tell me? What she's saying that she wants right now? Yeah. Maybe it's nothing. Maybe it's a, um, a shiitake mushroom broth. You know, I don't, I don't, listening. And, and also having my radar up for people who might inspire me. You know, I, I'm a, a big believer in intuition and really listening. It's like we were talking earlier before we started recording about napping and the power of that. It's incredibly therapeutic. You know, there are large populations of the world who do that every day because it, it really helps quality of life. And so, yeah, just I, one thing I did, I, it was about, I've been here about five years in New Zealand and I used to be a big runner before I had a big car accident. I was hit by a car, which I'll talk about in a sec, but, and um, at that point, I really wanted to see what my body could do. What she cap- what is a human body capable of doing? And we hear amazing stories about, you know, people climbing Everest without oxygen and all sorts of stuff. I thought, well, what can my body do? And so I ran three half marathons and a triathlon in six months on a raw fruitarian diet to see how would that be with my body wow and love it was that amazing exper- <laughs> love that experiment that's cool <laughs> it was amazing because i just found such a powerhouse of energy available and also learned that whilst that that worked for me i probably did that for about a year carried on that way of eating and then noticing that my body was asking for something different and for me, you know, there would have been a time where I would have thought, oh, that's flakiness. That's not being committed to something. But what I'm, le- I'm coming to know, and this might be something to do with being in my 50s now, is that it's about listening. And nothing is permanent. The only, the only surefire thing that's going to happen is change. That's the only thing that I can guarantee, is that everything's oh, going to change. I love that. <laughs> I, I absolutely love that intuition is is the key it really it is. So is whatever it might be you know intuition to party more you know let your hair down more, which is what I need to do when I you know I've been in a relationship for seven years which is not great and it's like well I need to just go and party for a bit you know that that was right for me at that time but now it doesn't that's uh, that's not something that yeah sometimes but not all the time so yeah, it's um, it's listening for what in that what I call the mighty pause, which is when we just mm. and it might be a deep. It's a deep. Often it's a deep breath um, that can really help me um, let go, um, untether, surrender, and wake up. Mm. 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 <laughs> I love. It, I love it. Yes. Mm. You had a, a, an incredible experience walking across the street with your team. Um, I'd love to hear more about that. That uh, yeah, that was a that was another really big gift of an experience for me. So I certainly didn't feel like that for about the first eight months. But um, Chris, my hubby, and I we were walking across the pedestrian crossing with our um, business um, colleague, our coach. And she was um, going to be actually looking after, we were making big plans. That was the about five days before we were due to fly to England. And so mm-hmm. my husband's a businessman by background, a qualified lawyer and property investor and all. The, and so he, what we were going to do is we were going to go to England. I just spent nine months completely systemizing the integrative health center that I had three of them. I sold two of them so I could focus on one of them that I was running here in, in Auckland. And, Um, complete took nine months to systemize that and what I decided I wanted to do is to um, set up licenses for that and make them available for people who wanted to follow a similar kind of structure because we were finding it was working well and so we were set we got our flights we were off to the UK we're kind of 
sorted everything out with house and whatnot. And our um, business coach was going to be um, managing the centre while we were away. Anyway, and so that crossing, that pedestrian crossing, um, for some reason, the man decided not to look at the sign that says um, turning traffic, give way to pedestrians. And it's right in the centre of the city at about 11 o'clock at night, really packed cross crosswalk that we were on, you know, a um, pedestrian crossing on the green man light, you know, it was flashing. So we're all walking. There were quite a few of us. And, and he he hit three the three of us. So my first of all hit my husband, then me, then our business coach. So everyone else fortunately was spared. But um, Chris hit the windscreen of the car with his head, which smashed. And he basically bruised his brain, um, fractured his skull and oh. lost his short term memory wow. for six weeks. And he became a nasty grump. And Chris is the most serene, kind, quiet, very beautiful soul. And so <laughs> he was a rat bag for about that, six weeks. That has to tell you a lot about the capability of the brain. Oh my gosh, doesn't it? Yeah. And he was so fortunate not to die. Um, and so I, it's basically similar. So he was hit on his left side, then I was hit straight after him. And apparently I flew 15 foot into the air up the road um after being hit by the car and then as i smacked down i fractured my shoulder and um it blew my left knee apart and fractured the bone of my femur so basically i needed to learn to walk again and if that oh. i actually had a bruise on my head and if the impact had been worse at that point we're thinking that who knows we i mean who knows what i nearly lost my leg in terms of the potential of the impact of that so it was a real whopper from some, somebody who's so physically active yeah. to, to, but I actually, I, of course, I wasn't um, doing the kind of level that I was, but one thing that I decided, and this is, this is something I'm really passionate about is movement can be so healing. So keeping moving as much of our capacity, you know, to as much of our capacity that we can. So I, in fact, that morning that we were hit, I was out there kind of um, hopping along because I knew that my body needed to keep moving. It was a very short distance, but it was that element that I'm st realizing that that was a key for me, you know, spotting and each of us are unique. You know, somebody might say, well, for me, I know that a real key for helping me with my health is deep breathing, or it might be to go swimming or whatever it is. We, we have our own unique formula that works really well for us. And so I made it a target. Let's see, I had this, the surgery in August to re to reconstruct my knee and then retraining all the muscles a lot of them had wasted and I decided I wanted to be skiing by December at Christmas because we'd planned this trip eons before to go visit my dad's um, father and his wife in Canada Chris is Canadian and so I was like I'm not going to let this one go I'm, I'm going to be doing this and so it was incredibly motivating for me because especially after the surgery I couldn't bend my knee more than five degrees so it's wow. it almost like my leg was stuck straight. And I'm like, oh, have I done the right thing having this surgery? Oops. And so, yeah, many days I would go to the gym in the morning and I realized that I, was, I decided to quit running. I was quite a big runner. And I decided to quit running because I treated many, many hundreds of patients with knee problems who'd had injuries that had surgery, but they kept running. So I thought, mm, there's yes, a clue there. Yeah. Mm. I'm not going to do that. So I need to find something else. And that's where I got into cycling. Mm. And so I, I set myself up with this big goal that so that I can rehab through this and so I can get better. I, I'm really driven by helping and making a difference for others. It just seems to really do something for me. And, um, and so what I decided was I, I met the right people. Uh, you know how when connections happen and we follow intuition, and I met these beautiful people who head up something called the Achilles Foundation here in New Zealand, which helps differently abled athletes who are who maybe have one leg or one arm or they're blind to get back into mainstream sports like running the New York Marathon. And so we ended up creating this event where I cycled the length of New Zealand on a tandem bike with a blind man on the back. Wow. As, as, he was an amazing wow. athlete. So he's run the New York Marathon blind maybe five times one, oh um, my a couple of times the human spirit again oh, in, uh. absolutely incredible and so we got to meet all the mayors and the deputy mayors traveling up through new zealand and so many people were inspired were interviewed on the tv and 
radio and newspapers with people saying, wow, if you guys can do this, you know, if I can rehab with my leg, because that's what drove me to carry on cycling and break through those barriers in my leg. And if this gentleman who, you know, he's blind and he's, um, um, he was diabetic and he, um, he lost the ability to use his bladder and he had his kidneys, replaced, all sorts oh of Oh my goodness, how inspirational things. is this? Wow. <laughs> and so it just, it, it's, it shows me just what is possible when we decide, it's a little bit like a, a Facebook Live I was doing this morning, when we decide that we, we do deserve, whatever it is, there'll be something there for all of us. We'll know what it is. Something's missing. Something in a, an area in our lives where we're like, we realize that we're settling, mm. that we're kind of mm, saying it's okay and it's not okay. And to realize that um, the only person who can you know, open that door for us and allow us access to whatever it is that it is in our lives is us. And th- here comes that mighty pause again, you know, that point to tap into our intu- intuition, have that stillness. It's often not that we don't, we, you know, there's no new information and it's not usually that we need more of this and this and this. I'm finding that less is more. more and, so. and that listening and, and when you when you do open up and listen, truly, truly just be almost like a blank canvas and you just allow things to drop in. It's like oh, it's <sighs> magical. Yeah. It's, it's one of the coolest things, hey. Yeah. It is. Yeah. So I'm it's learning so to give that to myself more. So tell me about your center and what you do. Tell me about, well, yeah, about the kind of work that you do with your clients. Great question. So it's it's an interesting one because it seems to be so varied. You know, I've worked in many areas um, with the health centers that we've run, which, um, and after that accident, by the way, we couldn't work anymore. So we needed to sell that practice and we lost all our income. And that was a really sobering time. That's where we realized, hang on a minute. Yes, we can rebuild this. We could start again and do the same again. But we thought, look, what if what if we chose to be in a situation in our lives where we wanted to travel, like we've just been location independent for five and a half years? What if we'd want to do that? Because we know we both knew way back then that we love travel. And we also thought, well, what if we wanted to be volunteering and not having to work? Or what if something happened again health-wise and we weren't able to work? And so that's when we started to explore ways of going online, ways of looking at things like residual Smart. income rather than trading our time for dollars. Um, because I always, like I say, I, I, I've known for a long time, forever and ever, that I've wanted to be able to contribute to more than just my life, to be able to help others who are in need, you know. And I've had many people be generous to me in my life. And I'm, I'm sure many, you know, it, it's, it'll carry on. But for me, it's more... What I'm becoming even more passionate about is being able to pay it forward in whatever way I can. So being able to set up a foundation that Chris and I have done as well mm. and be able to contribute, you know, um, virtually adopt two children in Africa. And because, you know, with circumstances, that's probably been a good way to do it, what with travel and whatnot. So um, what, what I do now is I work with people who are ready for change. You know, that might be, and it's often women who are, um, you know, maybe it's often sort of between 30, 60, but really 60 is the new 40. Or, you know, I'm working with a beautiful lady at the moment who's just extended several times and she's in her 70s. So I believe that we are as old as we say that we are. Amen, girl. <laughs> yes. And, you know, and really, if we are, um, we're designed to live to 120 or more. And that's the point at which our heart muscle actually stops beating because it's beaten so many times in our lives. So if we are thinking that we're not even, we're, I'm not even halfway through. And if I'm saying that I am, then I am doing myself out of life and often quality of life. Um, yeah, so um, I'm passionate about helping people to actually live the lives that they love. And, you know, oftentimes that comes down to physical health or emotional, mental, spiritual, or even financial. And so for me, I serve in the areas that, um, are the most important and poignant for the person I'm working with. Often people come to me with some kind of health challenge and it will um, oftentimes, it's never one thing, you know, where it's a bit like saying, oh, my head's not connected to my foot. Everything's connected, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I feel d- absolutely delighted to work with people on their journeys. And it's usually between five and 11 months that we work together um, with the, you know, um, 
I find that it really does take that. I mean, people often don't don't want to embrace that, but it's very, very difficult for most people to change quickly. Um, it's it's a process. It's just it's just a process. Yeah, and we think about most classically things like health challenges. You know, for me at 21, being diagnosed with heart disease, that would have been cooking away in there for many years. You know, we're discovering the first signs of heart disease in three-year-olds. Oh. So mm. it starts early mm. and um, we can set ourselves up for changing that trajectory like I was so fortunate to do or continuing in the same thing and looking for ways to kind of patch it up. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. Um, it's just that's why we, I mentioned earlier about that, that space um, to just allow ourselves to stop and listen and, and ask ourselves, honestly, nobody else can answer this. Is this somewhere that I'm or some, some place in my life that I am um, not allowing myself to have all that I deserve? Mm. And um, yeah, I, I, living I'm a learning. living life to the full. Exactly. Yeah. And, and being awake. To me, it's about being awake. That's so true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> I've been to that. Yeah. If you could sum up something that you would love to impart to those viewing, what would it be? Mm. What would it be? My my thought would be my offering to you tuning in would be um a couple of things one of them is to allow yourself to actually celebrate yourself whatever whatever that might be it might be there may you know it may be like you might be able to relate to me having been in times in my life that have been very dark and i'm thinking celebrate what but when i again when i stop and when I'm triggered by a question like this one that you know, you're listening into this recording and hearing this, and it might trigger something for you, that what is it about you that you celebrate? Because I, I truly believe that so many good things begin from gratitude. And from that, that's, that's being in that space of gratitude. That would be, that would be, um, that would be the main thing that would come to my mind is that space of, of, of um, yeah, gratitude and celebration of, of ourselves. Um, and also what asking yourself, like I do often, what are you most excited about in your life that's happening now or in the future? Um, because for me, that's a really good one. And if I sit there and I'm drawing a bit of a blank, that's a great clue for me. <laughs> it's time to start it's asking questions. Yeah. That's one of my favorite questions to ask when I'm in a session with somebody is what is it that you really, really, really want? What do you really want? And so often we do, we draw blank. Yeah. 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 You know, we're so busy. Oh, but I, you know, what about my kids? What about, well, I want them to be happy or where I want, and it's like, well, what about, and it, you know, it, and I, for me, it was selfish to feel that way when I was growing up. And I thought, oh no, 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 that's, that's wrong. And actually it's um, making sure that it begins with us, maybe our faith, then it begins with us. And then when we fill our cup, when we put our oxygen mask yes. on, then we can help whoever else is on the plane. Mm -hmm. who's having a problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is really true. Mm -hmm. That is really, And you know, and I love the simplicity of gratitude. And, and quite honestly, there are so many everyday things that we don't think about that we just take for granted. And they're okay. actually miracles. Yeah. Like the sun coming up. Or the full moon, you know, or the freshness of the air, wherever you might happen to be, where we, we, we can access that. Yeah. I have a friend that I do that with every day. We send each other three things that we're grateful for for the day. And, there, and I have to be honest, there are just some days I'm going, mm. what am I grateful for today? <laughs> and I have to really make myself think, and then I, and then I just have to be quiet. Yeah. What, did, what, what am I taking for granted that I did today? Yeah. And it doesn't have to be a magnificent thing. It could be, I got to take a walk today. Yeah, yeah, you're so right. In fact, one thing that's, because that really by, re resonates with me, gratitude. And I was invited to be part of a Facebook group, which is called the 90 Days of Gratitude. And so for 90 days, the challenge is 
that each of us post five things that we're grateful for in this closed, safe Facebook group every day for 90 days. And I got the bug. I so enjoyed this. And the beautiful, imagine the kinds of people who had brought together to do this, a bit like the ladies in your, How fun. In, in your movement. And so it's now been, let me see. I think I'm now in my seventh year of consecutively every single day posting five things I'm grateful for. Oh, because that's why wouldn't really I? good. Oh my gosh, that's really good. Why wouldn't I? Yeah. It's part You're, of life. It's like breath, right? That we take for granted. That's something that our, yeah, something that our body does for us every day. You bet. So to me, posting five things I'm grateful for is like breathing. It's just part of what a great habit it's fantastic i highly recommend it it's been great for me so good so yeah. good so good have we left anything out oh yes I, I want you to share some cool things like interesting little facts about fee um such as i know that you're also you sing you play instruments you've performed for prince charles yes <laughs> he's still around i think um yeah, so I fun yeah. stuff. Pardon? Fun stuff. Yeah, fun stuff. So singing, I got to sing on a stage um, with to an audience of about two thousand people in the states once. That was a few years ago. That was fantastic. I really enjoyed that. I really, I I'm keen to be part of an a cappella group. So I'm mm. looking to to find some keenies locally, actually, who might be keen to do that. I play classical guitar, but I'm looking to get a mic so that I, the sun's really come out, isn't it? Um, so that I can um, play in some kind of a group. So I've played um, in orchestras and um, played all over the UK and been on the radio and whatnot, but I'm, I'm really keen to do it in a more of a creative way, maybe with singing. Um, and I have my private pilot's license that I'm looking to- Oh my gosh. This year, <laughs> which would be fun. <laughs> um, I love rock climbing. That's one of my passions. Um, and now that we're based back here in New Zealand, it makes things like this a lot more practical and a lot more doable now that we're in a place that has- Man, been, you're blowing me away. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, there's so much, there's so much to do. There's so many um, extraordinary experiences to have. Um, you know, I love skiing. Um, I love, um, Tennis, you know, anything, anything that involves kind of getting out there and running around, I'm a big fan of. So um, those would be those would be a couple of the things, getting current again and getting my rating in a six-seater plane so we can take friends away for the weekend oh and go exploring. Well, weekend. you are way more adventurous than I am. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, and, and it's interesting because you'd be adventurous in ways that um, are, I, I wouldn't think about. So, you know, they'd be like, oh, they'd be scary for me or outside of what you know what, what I would consider so I think it's really cool we're also different it is I, I love that I love that that's one of the my favorite things about meeting so many different people I, I just embrace it. I love it yeah. yeah and being inspired you know yes something and you certainly inspired. you certainly do that it's such, so so awesome talking to you I'd, I'd like to do more of this with you let's do that yeah for Definitely. sure so yeah. how can how can people connect with you Fee? The sun. So um, how can they connect? Well, Facebook is a good spot. Um, you'll see that I'm a member of your group, um, Debbie. Um, well, people will if they are looking, looking for me. Um, I can pop my or maybe give you so that you've got my website um, so that you could um, make that available for people if they'd like that. Those sure. are probably the easiest ways through Facebook um, and through my website, which or my email. So I can send you my email. Yeah, you just like send us out your contact questions. information. That'd be awesome. Yeah. So it's so, I find this is so cool. Like your sun is coming up and ours is going yes. down. Yes. <laughs> and it's an absolutely spectacular day. We've had lots of rain, but it's um, all clearing now. And it's really, it's really beautiful. Yes. All righty. Well, I'm, it's probably time for us to say goodbye to everybody. Thank you for all of you who have tuned in. I hope you've enjoyed this conversation. I know I sure did. And I'm so happy that you agreed to come on and chat with us. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much for having me. Really, yes. really awesome to be here. Thank you, Debbie. And thank you for all you do. You're welcome. Thank you. Mm -hmm.